Hey my legion, how y'all doing today? I'm here today to review a historic episode of Saturday Night Live. Um, and it's weird because today's the, uh, uh, before Saturday Night, Live, Saturday, Night Live, Saturday Night Live started at 12, 19, it officially became winter, the winter season. <coughs> and uh, last week when I reviewed Saturday Night Live, I saw that, uh, what was on this week, and it was Eddie Murphy hosting. I was like, I was surprised. This is like a Chris Prince from NBC because it's the most excited I've been about Silent Live in a long time. Because I used to watch, I think most people used to watch Silent Live on a regular basis. Now I do it, I review it, I like doing the reviews of it if I'm, I'm, if I'm available. If I hang out with my buddy John, I can't do them. And over the last, let's say, say 25 years this is the fifth episode of Silent, of Silent Live I've been excited to see I'll tell you the other ones I mean because some people like Will Ferrell so you expect them to be on stuff but these are the ones that the last these five episodes are the ones that excited me and, and there were some reruns in here a long time ago in the 90s there used to be um, they used to show reruns of Silent Live the old Silent Live between 4 and 5 in the morning on Saturday nights on NBC and I know Fred Willard hosted it, and they had Devo as a guest. I was very excited about that because I didn't know who Devo was until they did the song Whip It, and that's when he really became a big, uh, big star. But this was back a couple of years back when they did Are We Not Men? Uh, are We Not Men? We Are Devo in the yellow jumpsuits when they did Uncontrollable Urge and stuff like that. So I was excited about that one. The next one that I was excited about was The Rock. Hosting it, not the second time, the first time. And that was right whenever uh, he was in, I mean, he was a big WWE star. And he uh, just, I said, I think they went to Lauren, Lauren Michael and stuff like that. Because they used to do Saturday Night Main Event at WWE. And they asked Rock, to, I mean, and I think Vince McMahon was on the show. And it was wrestling, it was a fantastic show. ACDC was musical. I was excited about that one. Then I was excited about the Betty White hosting, and that was like a write-in campaign that went viral. Even this is way before I had um, internet, you know, on Facebook, and that was a fantastic episode. Then I don't know kind of, I reviewed this too. They used to, they had like reruns of Saturday Live at ten o'clock, and sadly Carrie Fisher passed away, and they had like the Carrie Fisher episode where she hosts from ninety seven. I was excited about that one. And this is the most I've been excited about episode. Eddie Murphy hosting for the first time in 35 years. Because he was the one that kind of resurrected the show. And there was a story I remember um, when his career wasn't doing as good. David Spade was on it with like Entertainment Minute or something like that. Weekend News. And he said uh, he said it's over. A, or look, look, it's a falling star catcher or something like that. And I guess that morning... The next morning, he got an angry call from uh, Eddie Murphy saying, "How dare you! Uh, how dare you say this to me? I saved the, I saved this show and all this other stuff." It was back in the early '90s, and it's so cool seeing Eddie Murphy finally again hosting Saturday Night Live. And he's talking about Netflix. He had the Dolomite movie, which was great. Coming to America Part Two is coming out on Netflix, and then I know they are doing Beverly Hills Cop Part Four. So those are all great movies coming up. Now, I have my notebook. I'm going to start using this notebook more often because whenever I was a judge for the Erie Horror Fest, no longer, you know, John said I should get a notebook. And I bought this. Remember when they used to have these? I mean, I'm old. I was born in 68. In elementary school, and there was a black uh, black and white thing on here, and they gave these out for free. So one or two, I mean, now you had to buy notebooks. I mean, well, notebooks weren't expensive, but in elementary school, they gave these out to you for free. Because I remember the teacher gave these out to us. They probably don't do that now. I mean, now you, and it, uh, parents make their, have to pay for toilet paper for kids in school and stuff. Um, well, anyways, I took notes in here, so let's check it out. Eddie Murphy hosting Silent Live the first time in 35 years. Uh, first off was the opening sketch. They called the cold opening, and it was like uh, a thing of the dramatic, uh, dramatic, <laughs> democratic debate. And they had like all the people, and they had like um, some old cast members come on, like Maya Rudolph and uh, Rachel Dreck and uh, Fred Armisen and stuff like that. 
And it, I mean, I like the Bernie Sanders uh, stuff with Fred, uh, with Larry David on it. And Larry David used to be a cast member on Fridays, which freaked the hell out of me because he looked really weird back then. He looks more normal now. But I mean, he, I mean, he used to be on Fridays. It was just trippy. I was talking a lot. And then uh, they had, uh, I'm talking about Trump and stuff, and then they had Alec Baldwin come up as Trump. And he said, you know, and it was an interesting thing. I thought it was very high-spirited. It made me laugh a little, a little teeny tiny bit or a smile. It was spirited. I give it a five and a half out of ten. Next was a monologue, Eddie Murphy, back on Saturday Night Live. First time in 35 years. I think he was supposed to be on a reunion show or like some anniversary. I don't, th I can't remember what happened. Why well, it don't matter. Uh, he started the monologue off. It was very funny. He did a little Bill Cosby, which I liked. And then uh, you saw Tracy Morgan, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock come up there and say, hey, what's up, man? All that cool stuff. It was a great monologue. Probably the best monologue I've seen in a while. I get a 10, uh, 10 out of 10. Next was Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood, one of my favorite things that he used to do. And it was absolutely criminal. When they had the Christmas episode of Saturday Night Live, uh, they showed all almost all new stuff. And they had like a little clip of Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood, and then they cut it off after a minute. And that, that, was a, that was a shame. But no, they had a full episode of that where actually the neighborhood was more, uh, was in better shape than what it was before. And this was really good and funny. And he uh, towered above the other cast members. The other cast members were, they haven't really established themselves yet. They were just character actors, as far as I'm concerned. And he was, uh, sorry, that, that was a 10 out of 10. That was fantastic. <laughs> Next was uh, a holiday Christmas baking competition. <coughs> that was so silly with some of the ugliest looking cakes ever. I love that. That was a 10 out of 10. It made me laugh. And then they had that Sonic the Hedgehog talk and stuff like that. And Eddie Murphy said, hey, we're going to win this shit. And he goes like, the in he said shit and he wasn't supposed to record his mouth. That was funny. That was a 10 out of 10 right there. Next, he did Home for the Holidays. Um, I kind of knew where this was going. Um, they had like a father, you know, in a family gathering. And saying, you know, this is a great time and stuff like that. And then, you know, and behind the scenes, you see all a bunch of fighting and stuff. And I thought it was good, but, and it was very, you know, true to form, but it wasn't as funny or as good as the, um, the Macy's closing commercial last week, which was absolutely brilliant. That was a 10 out of 10. This one was really good, but I kind of predicted it, but I liked it enough, and I was going to give it a 9, but the way it ended, I gave it a 9.5. That was really good, a uh, good episode. Good, uh, skit. See where I'm at. Okay, they got the Mass Singer. The Mass Singer was awesome. You know, I had a guy here at Corn, and it said, uh, All Tibidated, All Tibidated, All Tibidated, and all these other songs. But they not, but not, but they not. And it was Buckwheat. Buckwheat brought back Buckwheat. It was so silly. He had that silly look on his face that's priceless. And that was great. That was a 10 out of 10. I loved it. And, uh, what was I going to say? Oh! Speaking of Buckwheat. Because that was a big popular character he did. I remember, like, and it was really funny. You know, all intimidated, all intimidated. And he did Christmas songs. And that was really funny. I liked it a lot. And everyone knew it was Buckwheat. I mean, you know, and they said, hey, we're so glad you're back, Buckwheat, and stuff like that. I think they were kind of kissing his ass somewhat. But, I mean, that's all right. It was funny. And uh, <clears throat> when I was in basic training, I have a silly sense of humor. You probably know it now. Um, even back then, back then, it was probably sillier. In basic training, I was joking around some. I mean, I usually don't. I mean, at work and stuff like that, I don't. I mean, I don't joke around enough, you know. But, I mean, back then, I mean, when we were going to go to sleep, you know, they had lights out and stuff like that. And some guys say, good night, John Boy. Good night. Good night. And then I saw I do buckwheat. I go, good night, Alabama. Not one good night or anything like that. No one got the joke. And I screamed out, I said good night, Alabama. Like that. I, I thought it was funny and shit. No one else laughed and that was it. 
Okay, I didn't want to say too much to get in trouble with the drill sergeants. And then, uh, let's see what's next. Let's see. Oh, I ain't going to try to fart over the shit my pants. Next was that Lizzo, Le Le Lezo, Lizzo, Lezo thing. I don't know who she was, but I liked the song she did. I mean, well, the song she did was okay, but I liked the attitude of it. I give that a 5 out of 10. It was all right. Um... I, I, I never heard of this person before. And the next was Weekend Update. Weekend Update started really strong. And had a, cool, a couple of cool Star, Star Wars jokes. I'm sure Howie can't like that. And then they had Gumby come out. And the Eddie Murphy Gumby character. They're trying to fit Gumby into a thing. Because I didn't know how they were going to fit him into the show. If he was going to reprise that character. And first of all, Gumby never talked like that. I mean, because I saw Gumby. I was like, hey, we be 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 you know what I mean? On the show, he talks like real squeaky. You know, and uh, oh, what's that uh, cloaky? Uh, I can't remember who did the who did the thing. And there was a good thing about um, oh, Troma had a, a documentary about the guy who did that claymation stuff. It was really cool, but it was really good. I mean, I liked it. That was really good. Uh, it was still funny throughout. I mean. Uh, Almost. Pete Davidson came out, and it was kind of interesting. He did a skit, and the skit wasn't that bad. And he said that he was the youngest cast member since Eddie Murphy, or maybe even younger than Eddie Murphy. And he was talking about, and they were rubbing in Colin Joe saying how lucky he was to call Johansson. He's very lucky. Um, but he was going out, Pete Davidson was going out with um, Ariana Grande, and then that went to Wayside. Um, and he was really good on it. Then they had, uh, oh, they had, uh, they had, uh, Michael Shea and, uh, and uh, Colin Jost were, gave each other jokes to read a Chris present. And those were really funny. They made each other look really bad. Those were really good. Uh, I like that. And then, um, so it was going on pretty good. And then they had, uh, <coughs> a character that. Uh, Cecily Strong did. That wasn't that good till the end when she started throwing up. So I thought that was really good. Um, and I think, I could be wrong, I think she said Merry fucking Christmas. And she didn't go like this. I think she said Merry fucking Christmas. I didn't, I don't have a, it's a replay or anything like that, so I get stuff she said there or not. She might have. I know Eddie Murphy said shit and he covered his mouth. In that episode... I mean, almost was perfect. I mean, and the character. I mean, it was all right. I give it a nine out of ten. Okay, next was. Okay, Black Jeopardy. Now, Black Jeopardy seemed like the only one good was Eddie Murphy as Billy Jones. How to be a hole. And uh, the rest of it kind of seemed kind of forced with uh, the other two contestants. And then Keenan Thompson was like, uh, "Welcome to the twenty-first century" and stuff like that. How to be an internet hole. You know, I mean, it was it was good, but not great. It seemed like it was a little bit forced. I give it an eight and a half out of ten. It's as easy as that. But it was cool seeing Velvet Jones. I forgot about that character. It was cool seeing him doing that. Um, so, I mean, that seemed a little bit forced, but it was still pretty good. Uh, oh, oh, the one thing I did like, I finally put a note out, I forgot. They had, like, um, like, what your sponsor, what gift you could get, and it said, put some water in it. And it's sort of like empty thing that said, once more, put some water in it. That That's happened to me with hot sauce. Because a lot of times with a hot sauce, they have like, sometimes like a pepper mash mixed with vinegar and stuff, and there, it leaves a paste or residue on the side to the bottle that you can't get out. And there's still some good stuff in there. And you add a little bit of water, shake it up, you got a little more hot, especially with that Chipotle hot sauce. I do this all the time if I'm close to empty, and there's still a lot of paste on there. I mean, it's still product. You know what I mean? I tried doing it with vinegar, and vinegar doesn't always work. Water works really best because you get more of the, um, it's more can, of a consistency with the hot sauce. With the vinegar, when I try doing vinegar, and sometimes it gets too vinegary. You add too much vinegar to the stuff, but with water, it works a lot better. So I do do that, <coughs> depending on how pasty the stuff is. 
Well, uh, some of that stuff is pure water based <coughs> or vinegar based and stuff like that. But I have done it. I like that. Put some water in it. That was the only really good thing they did outside of Eddie Murphy on Black Jeopardy. Next was that Lizzo again. And I, th I think I like this song a little bit better. I give it a 6 out of 10. And then it seemed like they had a problem. They had like a commercial break. And then it came back. I expected another skit. And then he showed the guys playing music. And you see Eddie Murphy. I, I think they had a problem with the set or something like that. And the very last skit on it was, wow, 15 minutes, was a North Pole News special report. And uh, basically, you know, they had a guy say, we're going to a report with some stuff happening in North Pole Christmas time. And, you know, the guy was hosting it, you know. And then they go to the North Pole, and the guy was saying, hey, we got a problem with these elves and stuff or something. And Amir said, hey, don't run down what my name is. There's a polar bear came in, chewing up the elves. It's over. And Eddie Murphy was really good in it. And everyone else was, yeah. I So I, I give that an 8 out of 10. And then he almost cracked up again, too, which is funny. Because he cracked it up as Gumby, and they cheered, and they cracked up on that one. I remember when he cracked up when he played, um, oh, Carver, um, the guy who invented the uh, uh, peanut butter or something like that. And then, you know, he made a mistake, and then somebody heard someone in the audience say something. And he goes, so I made a mistake. So what? And he said, I said, better stop laughing before you make me smile. Like that. You know, he came from Blooper and stuff. This was a fantastic show. I guess there's the Christmas present from NBC. Christmas present from Saturday Night Live. Uh, this is the best Saturday Night Live I've seen in a long time. I did not see the Will Ferrell one from Thanksgiving. I got to watch that one too. God, how cat said that was really good. Um, Did you leave Saturday Night Live? They might have one or two good skits and the rest of the show is yeah, only okay. I give this... Uh, let me add those things up. I think it adds up to an eight and a half out of ten. It's very, I mean, very good. It was an awesome. If they had a better musical guest, it would probably have been a little bit higher. But she, I think she did fine. So I hope, I mean, this was a wonderful episode. So I hope you liked this uh, review of Eddie Murphy hosting uh, Silent Live. Just premiered on NBC. Until next time, bye, please. Take care of my legion. Now I am curious about the ratings. I think the ratings are going to be through the roof on this one. 35 years, Eddie Murphy's back. I mean, people have not forgotten him, and he was red hot on the show. I mean, and he he really outshined everyone else. But, I mean, I think they, the other guys held their own, like, on weekend update and stuff, which was really cool. So I hope you liked this episode, everybody. To, until next time, take care. And Howie Cat said, I wonder what Howie Cat thought of the show. I hope you liked it. Okay. Take care, everybody.